This is the ROG Harp Ace Aim Lab Edition. In this video, we'll be taking a close look at the design, features, and performance of the Harp Ace gaming mouse to help you decide if it's the right choice for your gaming setup. So whether you're a competitive player or a filthy casual looking for something better to get you out of bronze too, I'll show you what this mouse has to offer. For those unaware, Aim Labs is an aim training program where people that are unable to comprehend teamwork go to blow off some steam as they're exhausted from blaming anyone but themselves when they lose. It'll be interesting to see what this collaboration brings. For the moment, we shall be looking at the hardware. This mouse is approximately 127mm long, 64mm wide and 40mm tall. The shape of this mouse is mouse shaped. This aims to please everyone with its rather standard ambidextrous design. There's no areas that push the mouse heavily to a specific grip type, so that does mean it should be suitable for all. It's similar to a Superlight. The side curves are very similar to each other, but the main difference is the location of the main hump. With the Superlight, when I palm grip it, the main hump makes most contact with the top of my palm. With the Harp Ace, that pressure is more focused directly at the center. This mouse is significantly lighter than the Superlight, weighing just 54 grams compared to the Superlight 63, so the ROG Harp Ace is actually super rrr -ra lighter. The coating for this mouse is a lot coarser than the Superlight, I'd probably say that the Harp Ace coating is more similar to what's found on the Razer series of mice. It's quite comfortable and gives a decent amount of grip. But now we get to the first mistake. You have these indentations on the side of the mouse to provide grip, or what I refer to them as to capture dirt. I don't find these grippy, just distracting, and it's kind of weird how they've added this when they also supply grip tape to stick to the side. If I want extra grip, I'll use what you've given me. I can't remove these lines unless I sand them down, I just hate them. Performance wise, there's some great marketing words, so I'll let Asus ROG explain it for me. ROG Aimpoint Optical Sensor, next generation 36,000 DPI with industry leading less than 1% CPI deviation for ultimate precision. precision. Tri mode connectivity, unmatched flexibility with wired USB, low latency 2.4 gigahertz wireless plus Bluetooth mode to pair up to three devices. Speed Nova wireless technology, low latency, reliable wireless performance, and optimized energy efficiency in the 2.4 gigahertz mode. But where have I been marketed to? The performance of the sensor is going to be great. Like every other mouse in existence these days, it performs well in game with no issues, but I'll provide more detail later on. What I do want to focus on is the battery life. You get 90 hours on 2.4 gigahertz with no lights and 70 hours with the scroll wheel light turned on. That's the only source of light on this thing. But anyway, I'd like to give credit to Asus ROG for actually providing this information in the technical specifications clearly. The switches on this mouse is using ROG's mechanical switch rated for 70 million clicks. These do feel a bit stiffer compared to some others that I've used recently, but it's not really a major issue for me. I haven't noticed it causing a drawback whilst playing, it was only really noticeable once I started to compare it to other mice. I'd love to do more detailed testing with these switches, but that means I'd have to open the mouse and I will certainly break it because these these hands are only made to destroy. Combining all this together, we get fantastic in-game performance. But before we start playing, my friends, we have to use the AimLab settings optimizer to make sure our DPI, liftoff distance, angle snapping, and sensitivity is set to the optimal choice to get the best out of us. This is something that is baked into aim labs if you are using this mouse. You basically perform some task and it will adjust the sensitivity and DPI to find out where you perform the best at. This is, from what I can tell, the main feature of the collaboration between the two companies. Now the sensitivity calculator is available to all mice by default, but if you have the Harp Ace it will also automatically configure DPI, lift off distance and angle snapping. It will automatically apply these settings depending on what you perform the best with. This part was very boring, long-winded, and I just found it completely pointless. But it did apply the DPI changes automatically, and if it suggests that it should add angle snapping for god knows what reason, or change liftoff distance, it will do that itself without having to use the software. Which is great, because if you do have to use the software, may god have mercy on your soul. 
For starters, it took 20 minutes for this to install. 20! And this thing is packed with useless features. Now, let me just assume first that you want to make changes to the products you've actually bought. So I will not be going over Aura Sync, Game Library, Scenario Profiles, Featured and News. Let's just focus on the device section. Thankfully, this area is usable. You can change DPI profiles, lift off distance, all the necessary stuff. You can switch off the lights and calibrate the mouse to your mouse pad, whatever that means. There is a useful section, which is power, which allows you to modify the sleep mode timer and allows you to adjust the lighting alert when it reaches a certain battery life. You can also set a battery notification for the software, which will pop up if you want something up to date and more reliable. Once this is set, you just have to press the system tray icon and it pops up, a convenient way of getting that information. There is onboard software so you can make all the changes needed and uninstall it immediately. But please make a lightweight version of your software. I don't care about sinking lights. I don't care about the terrible wallpapers that you suggest I should set. I don't care about managing my game library. That's what Steam is for, you fools. There's dumb stuff like featured to see the latest gaming deals. And news if you want to win tickets to see the hit new film Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves in theatres soon. I've bought a gaming mouse, I don't want to join your weird cult or republic of gamers. Thankfully you don't have to actually install the software. You can change lift off distance, polling rates and DPI on the mouse itself, but it will be harder to achieve those finer numbers. Now before I get to how I feel about the mouse, let's take a look at the price. It is $150. This puts it at the same price bracket as the Razer Mice, the Death Adder V3 Pro and Viper V2 Pro, so it's a premium price. Now when I've been using it in games it has been excellent. It's reliable and I feel like I've been playing really well with it. The sides having these grooves for grip can get very distracting, which is a shame, but you get grip tape to cover them if they are that annoying. But I do find it funny that I am supposed to use grip tape to remove their grip. But what impressed me the most was the quality of this mouse. It feels very solid whilst keeping a light weight of 54 grams without any holes in it, which makes it lighter than the Razer mice mentioned as well. The scroll wheel was fantastic, I found it very reliable to use for tap strafing and jumping in Apex Legends. It's also very easy to scroll through but the notches remain solid. I haven't had an issue with the scroll wheel scrolling by itself or getting stuck between a notch like I find on some other mice. The side buttons are crisp and easy to reach also. What also comes included is some spare PTFE feet and also grip tape included. Included. There's a USB dongle slot on the underside of the mouse as an added bonus and the dongle adapter can clip onto your mouse pad which is pretty neat so I can highly recommend buying this mouse. And I do think it is worth the $150. The quality and performance of this mouse is on the same level as the Razer mice. The clicks are a bit heavy but as fans of the Logitech G502 say, maybe you should hit the gym if you find them a bit too heavy for you. I find that when you give a product such a high price like $150, the mouse has to be almost flawless. And the ROG Harp Ace Aim Lab Edition has pretty much reached that. The benefits of the Aim Lab collaboration seem to be non-existent, so it neither really adds or detracts from the quality of this mouse. So if you're thinking of buying this mouse, I'd say get it. And if you can afford $150 on a gaming mouse, maybe you can afford $100 on a mouse mat. There's a review on screen now you should watch.